Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service for the Lebanon Church of Christ in Dresden, Tennessee. Uh, this pre-recorded service is being made available for Sunday, uh, August 4th, uh, 2024. It's the first Sunday in August. Uh, we finished up our uh, eight-week summer series last week. Uh, our kids are going back to school this week. Our teachers uh, and support staff have already started back uh, with in-service and different activities uh, over the past week. And we are glad uh, that you are here. Uh, we hope that if you're in our weekly county area, uh, you'll be able to uh, come by and worship with us today in person. Uh, we'll have our Sunday school classes uh, for all ages uh, at 9 a.m. this morning, uh, Lord willing. And then at 10 a.m. we'll have our worship service. I'll share uh, a similar lesson to the one we'll have here uh, online in just a moment uh, based on the same text. And then tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, we'll have our discussion Bible study. And in that uh, Sunday evening Bible study, we've been talking about uh, building on the basics and kind of building up our knowledge and understanding, not just of how we ought to serve God, uh, kind of in a, a bullet point format, but what that really means to dig down deep, uh, to truly believe, to truly repent, to truly confess Christ uh, with our lives from day to day, to truly enter into uh, a covenant relationship uh, through baptism uh, and to be a part of his church. And so we've been talking about those things uh, and enjoying that study and hope you will come and be a part of that uh, tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, we love our church family. Uh, we try to love our community. We'll have some announcements about some things that are going on uh, in and with our community, especially with back to school going on uh, over the next few days. Um, and so we're just glad uh, that you're here uh, and glad that we had the opportunity to share Christ's love uh, with you today. As far as our online uh, format, I'll be sharing here in just a moment. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer uh, together and remember those of our number and uh, others that we may have on our hearts and in our minds who are struggling, uh, lifting up praise for those who have uh, been delivered uh, and been helped in their situations and uh, just praying for awareness to to be uh, attuned to what's going on around us uh, in the world, in our community. Uh, following our prayer, we'll have a lesson from God's Word. And uh, we're looking at uh, questions um, uh, in this in this study, uh, Lord willing, in August, uh, questions that people ask when they're distressed and how God uh, answers those questions uh, and speaks to us uh, in and through his word and through the details uh, of his word and through the details of our daily lives. And so we'll have a lesson uh, today that'll be uh, starting out and based in uh, Judges chapter 6 and a question uh, that Gideon asked uh, the angel of the Lord. So we'll have that time uh, together. Following that and a moment to reflect, I'll offer a couple of prayers. Uh, we take the Lord's Supper each first day of the week, uh, the bread and the fruit of the vine, uh, to remember uh, the death of Christ. And we do that at our in-person services each week. And I'll offer a couple of prayers here. Uh, if you're in a hospital setting or in a nursing home, maybe traveling uh, and not able to gather today, uh, you can use that for that purpose uh, and have that time set aside. Then we'll have some announcements um, for our local folks uh, and be dismissed uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, it's good to um, be here and to have reached this point. Uh, it's still very warm outside. Obviously, summer hasn't uh, let go yet, but uh, many of you know I'm a huge fan of school and being back in school. And even though I'm not uh, in school myself, I'm excited for our young people uh, who are starting out uh, this journey uh, of a new school year. And hopefully we'll be back in some rhythms uh, that will help us in our spiritual lives uh, as well. Let's go ahead then um, to start out this morning uh, with a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll step into our lesson time together. Let's go ahead and pray together. Our Lord and our Father uh, in heaven, we're so thankful for this day and for the opportunity we have to come here on the first day of the week and the first Sunday of this new month and to lift up our hearts and praise uh, to consider uh, your glory and your majesty to honor you and worship. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us today to set the tone not only for uh, our time together today, but all throughout this coming week and all throughout the month ahead and all throughout the remainder of our lives as you will for us, that we would be able to um, look to you for guidance and direction in all that we do. Uh, we ask that you would strengthen us um, through this time, that we might focus uh, our hearts and that we might take the things that we gain from your word and carry them out into our lives this week. Lord, we're thankful for the technology that brings us together today, especially those who may be struggling, those who may be sick, those who may be dealing with treatments, those who are facing surgeries and procedures and ongoing uh, health challenges. Uh, Lord, we'll lift some of those people up by name in just a few moments, but you know those needs and you know who is on our heart 
uh, the people that we know in our personal lives or in our workplaces or through our children's schools that are struggling. And we just ask that we would have um, hearts that are uh, kind and gracious to them in any way that we can be, that look to serve, uh, that look to love in the way that you would have us to love, and also that we would continually remember those folks uh, in prayer from day to day. We pray the Lord for our country and for our community, especially in this uh, season of, of distress throughout the world. Uh, we pray for our leaders locally and at the state level and federal level and leaders all throughout the world that they might work together, um, that there might be uh, goodness and righteousness upheld, uh, and that people might have the opportunity to learn and grow and to worship uh, freely throughout the world. We pray, Lord, for our hearts in this season, as many of us are uh, facing challenges with division around politics or around our faith or in our community. And Lord, we just ask that in all things, we would look to your word for guidance and direction and that we would extend grace uh, to those in our lives that, uh, that we may struggle to love, that we realize the grace that we receive from you and we ask that we would have hearts that, that give that to others and uh, submit those uh, hardships and difficulties to your will uh, today. We pray, Lord, for those who are sharing your word today, uh, people who are preaching and teaching all throughout our country and our community, but especially those who we support as a congregation who are all throughout the world this day, whether they be in uh, places uh, throughout the world where the church is, uh, is not strong in number. We pray for the tailors in Japan and uh, we pray for uh, those in our own country who are working like the Carters in jail ministry or uh, the Mosiers uh, in Louisiana and in their online ministry. We pray for the Smiths in Alaska. We pray for those who are training uh, like the Rosens and uh, we pray for uh, the Jones family at Bear Valley. Lord, we just lift up these people and, and many others that we know of personally who are working in difficult places, who are seeking to reach the lost and seeking to train others uh, to reach out uh, to the lost. And we pray for these efforts and that good might come uh, from the things that are being done and that you would strengthen these workers uh, as they labor uh, from day to day. Bless us, Lord, with opportunities in our lives to speak a word for Christ, to be able to share through our attitudes and our actions as well as through our words uh, the good news of salvation. We pray especially for our students and our teachers uh, in this coming week as school is getting back in full force. We pray for others who are currently in the process of moving to universities or starting vocational programs or have enlisted in the military. And we pray for all those who are far from home and the temptations that they may face. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them uh, to overcome. We pray, Lord, for our uh, local schools and our local teachers, for our parents and grandparents, so they can support these students uh, in this important time in their lives. We pray, Lord, for our church family and that you would give us the, the wisdom uh, as we are in a process of expanding our classes and, and offering different things for our young people, that you would help us in that, that you would help us to uh, be in good relationship with our brothers and sisters around about us, that you would help us to be involved in our community in ways that we can let the light, the light of Christ shine uh, day in and day out. We're so thankful for Jesus and for his life for his ministry, ultimately for his death and his resurrection and the power that he demonstrated in rising from the dead. We ask that we would take your word and we would take your will and the presence of your spirit and go into our world and, and uh, seek in everything that we do to bring glory and honor to you. Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short of your will for us. Help us to look for opportunities uh, to be faithful. Help us to extend uh, goodness and graciousness and love to each person we come in contact with this week. We pray for those who are struggling uh, in their faith. We pray for those who've almost given up. And Lord, we pray that something might be said or done today or in the coming week that would draw them closer to you. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, good to uh, see you here today and to have this opportunity uh, to be together. Uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, I love back to school uh, fever. Uh, I love school supplies. I've had to stay home a couple of days this week uh, to avoid uh, buying some school supplies. Um, and so uh, I think that's good for us uh, to be reminded of new starts and new things. And even if you're like me and you're a little bit older, not going back to school, uh, it's still a great season to begin uh, and to refocus on things of the Spirit. You know, as we uh, go through life, I think we all can convince ourselves that we remember 
uh, details better than we do. Uh, have you ever been in a situation where someone said, "Hey, this is your this is your number. It's a six digit code, uh, you know, to open this email or to to uh, the lock on this storage unit. Uh, here it is. Uh, this is it. You have something to write it on, and you say, "Oh no, no, I'll remember that. I'll remember that." And then they say the numbers, and no sooner than the numbers are out of their mouth uh, that they are completely uh, forgotten. It might be your checking account number, it might be someone's email address. Uh, a lot of hotels now, if you're driving. Uh, they'll ask for your license plate number uh, so that they can confirm that people aren't just parking their cars to get free parking, but it's people that are actually staying in the hotel. Um, and it never fails that if I think I can remember those things uh, and I don't write them down, I don't repeat them, I just hear them, they go in one ear uh, and out, out the other. Uh, if we are dependent as people on our isolated uh, single experience, that is hearing a phone number one time or hearing someone's name one time. You know, they say their name and we're thinking of what we're going to say next and we miss their name and then we spend a lot of time trying to remember it. If we are dependent solely on our single uh, experience, uh, we struggle with recall. We struggle to remember. And that's true whether it's a phone number, that's true if it's an address, um, those things that we interact with from day to day. Uh, but I think that's also true spiritually. In order for us to be grounded, uh, spiritually speaking, we have to repeat and repeat and repeat. And we also have to help one another uh, to remember. Um, if Amory and I are traveling together and someone is, is, is telling us a number, maybe over the phone, isn't it good? Uh, do you find this yourself to repeat it out loud to the other person or even better to repeat it out loud while the other person writes it down and then you can repeat it back and verify it uh, to make sure you're uh, correct, to make sure you've got the right information? Well, spiritually speaking, we need that as well. We need to preach the gospel. We need to share God's word. We need to remember what God has done back and forth to one another over and over again. Uh, this morning, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Judges uh, in the Old Testament. It's not a book that we look at uh, all that often, uh, but it's a book that our kids love, our, our um, middle schoolers and teenagers, they love this book because there's a lot of action in it. Uh, there's a lot, uh, sadly, uh, telling of the Old Testament, of uh, violence in it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, catchy, memorable stories uh, in it about um, battles and, and treachery and that sort of thing. But one of the things that is a common experience of God's people uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and for God's people uh, today is that as we grow weary, um, you know, as we look out at the world and it seems that things are getting worse or it seems that things are unfair or things are not as they should be, um, as we grow weary from doing that, we begin to doubt uh, God's presence. We begin to wonder, if God is with us, why isn't he doing something uh, about this. If God is active in the world, if God cares, why aren't things changing? And I think it's important for us to remember that all through the history of God's people, from the very beginning until now, um, there has been this tendency uh, to do that, to forget what the Lord has done, to fail to remember what the Lord has done, and because of that, we become more um, uh, desperate, because that become more discouraged, uh, and we lose sight of what God is doing uh, here and now. So there's an importance, right, in remembering and recalling and recounting uh, what God has done in the past. It helps us here and now. In the story that we want to look at today, the account from Scripture uh, found in Judges chapter 6, uh, if you begin with verse 1 uh, and read down through uh, verse 10, and I'm not going to uh, recount those, six, uh, those uh, 10 verses for you here, um, but to summarize, and this is a summary that uh, you could find several places in the Old Testament, um, basically, God's people have been faithful, and then they have rebelled, and God has allowed their enemies uh, to overwhelm them. And in this moment, um, the Lord has allowed his people to be delivered into the hand of the Midianites, uh, who were some of their very powerful uh, neighbors, and these people are oppressing them. Uh, they are uh, stealing from them. They are stealing uh, their grain. And so the people of Israel are hiding. Uh, they are in holes. They are in caves. Uh, Gideon, who we're about to be introduced to, is in a wine press, uh, you know, hidden out of sight, uh, kind of down between the hills, hidden behind walls, uh, trying to keep his grain hidden as he prepares it uh, so that the Midianites will not steal it. And what I think is important for our purposes is that uh, these generations of, of God's people, uh, Old Testament Israel, um, you know, they've been delivered out of Egypt. Uh, Abram was called, right, to begin 
the nation to be the father of many nations. Um, they've had the experience of Moses at this point. They've had the experience of Joshua. And yet they still forget uh, that the Lord uh, is with them, that the Lord has cared for them, that the Lord has sustained them. And so I want to pick up with um, this conversation uh, that takes place where the angel of the Lord appears uh, to Gideon, who he is going to call uh, to lead God's people. And we want to particularly um, pay attention to Gideon's response uh, when he receives this call. Verse 11. This is Judges chapter 6, uh, beginning with verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which is an Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abarizrite, whose son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Then Gideon said, this is verse 13, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand. Uh, of the Midianites. I think it's interesting that this theophany, right, this presence of God, this angel of the Lord, as he's sometimes referred to in the Old Testament, he greets Gideon with this uh, commendation that is absolutely um, either trying to pump him up, if you think of it in a positive way, or sarcastic. Uh, mighty man of valor who's hiding in a wine press, hiding down in a hole uh, to be saved from the Midianites. And Gideon throws it back on him, right? Uh, he says, and I love this question, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Do we ever feel that way? Um, do we ever feel that uh, culturally? Do we ever feel that personally? I think we probably do. Um, in the midst of hard times, um, God's people, uh, we as God's people, grow weary. And we can sometimes doubt that God is with us. We can sometimes doubt that the God that we've heard about uh, is truly the God that we serve. And we wonder, if God is with us, then why are these things happening to us? I want to examine that from a couple of different uh, angles and then think about some ways that we can uh, kind of reverse that trend uh, in our thinking. First, I would suggest, um, in, a, in a larger sense, that culturally, we tend to forget the presence of God. Uh, culturally, we tend to forget the presence of God. Now, that's certainly true in our, in our wider world, but even in church culture, right? Even in um, places uh, like where we live, where uh, religion it seems to be on every corner, Christianity, uh, at least some form of it, is, is pressing on us from every direction and every side, we culturally still contend to forget the presence of God. Um, Old Testament Israel's great uh, communal sin, if we could say that they had one besetting cultural um, sin that, that plagued them again and again, uh, it was certainly forgetfulness. Um, they were in this perpetual cycle. Um, the Lord would do a great wonder for them, like he would call Abram, uh, you know, to come forth out of Ur uh, and to go to the land of Canaan. And then within just a few chapters, uh, he would be forgotten uh, and the people would be scattered. Uh, he would call Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, and they would be led out. And before they could even let the waters of the Red Sea settle over the armies of the Egyptians, they had forgotten uh, and were crying out that Moses had, had tricked them and led them into the wilderness, uh, not, to, not to die in Egypt in comfort, the comfort of slavery, but in this barren place in the wilderness. And so there's this continual cycle. But God's power is demonstrated. God's power is seen. Uh, it's remembered. It's honored. And then time passes, sometimes a very seemingly short amount of time, but certainly in the time that takes uh, multiple generations to pass, uh, circumstances would change. And those changing circumstances and that lack of connection with the past, uh, it causes their memory uh, to erode. It causes it to fade. Uh, we were talking uh, in our family just, just a couple of uh, nights ago uh, about, you know, kind of collective memory and and uh, how things that uh, that I think of as being, um, you know, relatively close by in time are actually now 50 years ago. I may not have a personal memory of it, but my parents do and my grandparents do and did. And so it's been told to us by people that witnessed it, by people that, that saw it. And yet we know this culturally, um, that each passing day, those generations change and shift and pass away uh, from us. And so our collective uh, memory is diminished. 
uh, we begin to lose touch uh, with those uh, with those things. Uh, when the blessings are great, we tend to forget God. Uh, when they were celebrating their deliverance, they would praise God, and then they would settle in and enjoy the bounty and enjoy uh, the, the gifts that they'd been given, but they would also begin to forget. Um, when trouble would come, they would cry out against God. Uh, God would uh, come in and, and raise up a deliverer uh, at times and deliver them, and yet as soon as they were delivered, they would go back to that complacency, and then they would forget the Lord, the situation would worsen, and they would cry out again. And so this is the, the constant trend um, that is happening. Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, Moses recording there what the Lord says about, you know, when you were delivered and brought into this land, land that you did not work for, but that the Lord delivers into your hands, be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Um, I think probably hearing that uh, as they were considering going into the promised land, they thought, we'll never forget the Lord. Uh, of course we remember the Lord. The Lord has given us manna in the wilderness. The Lord uh, destroyed the armies of the Egyptians. The Lord delivered us uh, with the plagues. And yet, even in the wilderness, as those very things were happening, they were already starting uh, to forget. They were already starting to remember Egypt as better than it ever was. They were already starting to, to project onto the promised land. It'll be so hard to go in there and to take it. There are people that live there, people with, with, with uh, great weapons and people who with great physical strength. They were already forgetting uh, the God that they served. I think culturally as a church and, and certainly wider, uh, wider lens on our culture as a whole, we tend to forget uh, the presence of God. I want to look back in the book that comes right before Judges uh, in the book of Joshua. The end of the book of Joshua is very telling uh, on, this, uh, on this point. Uh, the book of Joshua, it ends with, um, conveniently, the death of Joshua, uh, which kind of gives us a little bit of, of insight uh, into the mindset of the people. Uh, Joshua dies, and we're told in Joshua uh, chapter 24 and verse uh, 31, it says, Israel, that is the nation, uh, served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had known uh, all the works that the Lord uh, the, of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. So as long as Joshua was alive, they kept their promise to stay faithful. And then there was a generation that had been trained up under Joshua, uh, who could remember the wilderness, who could remember the wanderings, who could remember the deliverance that God had wrought, say, at the Battle of Jericho. And as long as those men and women were alive to tell the story, the people remembered and the people maintained uh, maintained faith. Now, in your Bible, probably the very next page uh, begins the book of Judges. And if you look over at how the writer of Judges uh, talks about this in Judges chapter 2 and verse 10, Speaking uh, parallel with the, with the end of Joshua chapter 24 there, it says, When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, in other words, when all of Joshua and his generation uh, that remembered him had died, it says in verse 30, Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. It is so important um, that we not forget the Lord. Now, you say, well, you're a preacher. Of course, you don't want us to forget the Lord. It's essential that we remember the Lord. But not just remembering the Lord ourselves and, and recounting the stories of what the Lord has done. Uh, sometimes you'll hear older people that talk about, oh, we used to have a, a two-week meeting and it went like this and there were hundreds of baptisms and all this. That's wonderful, right, that, that people have a living memory of that. Uh, and that we have a connection with that, even if those people are repeating stories that they had heard from their grandparents and parents. But what's amazing um, for us collectively is that we don't need to forget that we are a, a line in that story, uh, that we are another uh, link in that chain. Um, what had happened apparently in the time of Joshua is that this generation that had known Moses and Aaron, the Joshua and Caleb generation, they were trained up. Uh, they saw what the Lord had done. They were younger, but they saw what the Lord did through uh, these older leaders that they had. And then the generation under them saw what Joshua and Caleb did and, and the faithfulness that they demonstrated when they brought back a report that God indeed would give the land into their hands and they were faithful to God's people even as they wandered in the wilderness. And then they led the armies of the Lord. They could remember that and they could uh, keep that in their hearts. But where the link breaks is that those stories 
of two generations ago and three generations ago were forgotten. Uh, they were not passed down. They were not lived out in the lives of people that heard them. They heard them as history. They heard them as old stories. They did not believe that God's presence would be with them in the same way. They did not lean into God's presence with them in the same way. And because of that, the book of Judges ends with this very tragic note that there was no king, there was no leader in Israel, and every man did what was right in his own eyes uh, in Judges 21 and verse 25. It only took a generation, right? It only took one a group of people failing to pass it on, one group of people failing to receive it, and within a span of just a few years, uh, culturally, they had forgotten uh, the presence of God. I think that we see that uh, today. Um, we see it generationally in age. Uh, we also see it sometimes geographically. Uh, sometimes we look around and we see churches that are getting smaller and smaller, and uh, we tend to think that's the only picture that's happening in the world, and we tend to, to become negative and think that the church is dying out, when in reality the church may be growing uh, in other places, in other languages, in other cultures. Um, and we fail sometimes to appreciate uh, the importance that we have uh, in carrying that message forward. Not every generation saw the wonders of God in Egypt, but every generation could remember them and remember that they were connected to the same God. Um, that ability and that willingness to pass it on mattered. Uh, and it was important. I think it's also important that not just in a cultural sense, um, but individually, um, individually, when we begin to doubt that God's presence is with us, we begin to doubt uh, that God's power is for us as well. And so as people lost connection uh, with God and with the heritage, the godly heritage that they had, um, they, they kind of got swept up in this cultural forget, forgetfulness. Uh, as believers, as individual people, uh, they begin to doubt God's power within. I think that it's really important that we don't catch um, the disease of our culture. And I don't just mean our broader world culture, but sometimes even our, our religious culture, a culture that is sometimes focused on what is not happening, uh, what is focused on what is negative, um, what is focused on what has been lost. Uh, and you see this sometimes in, in people's attitudes and heart uh, toward the church. Um, when things have gone poorly in a particular place or when there have been uh, sinful things that have happened or mistakes that have been made or failures of leadership, uh, sometimes we allow something that's happened in the broader uh, culture, think about scandals and abuse and those sorts of things, to impact our personal faith. Uh, we take all the negative in uh, and we fail to appreciate and see uh, the positive things that God can and is willing to do uh, in us and through us. We fall prey um, to this negative mindset that if God is for us, as Gideon says, then why have all these things happened to us? If God is really here, then what is God doing? Um, it had been seven years, the scriptures tell us, since the Midianites had oppressed Israel. If Gideon could separate himself out and, and think objectively about the situation, he would know that this was a pattern that was due to Israel's sin, not due to something that God uh, was doing or not doing. But in the moment, uh, they felt powerless. In the moment, they felt overwhelmed. In the moment, they felt uh, afflicted. And because of that, they doubted God's power, and it limited their faith. It limited the possibilities of what they could see. Think about just a few examples from Scripture where this happens. Um, Abram and Sarai are called to leave Ur of the Chaldees. They're called in old age to do this. Abraham is given the promise in Genesis chapter 12, and it's reiterated uh, in Genesis chapter 15, uh, that through him all the nations of the earth will be blessed, uh, that his seed will, will go forth, right, and be uh, a blessing to the nations. There'll be land, uh, there'll be a family, there'll be blessing uh, from everywhere that they go. They receive that um, already at a point where they don't have an heir of their own, and yet God delivers them again and again and again. Um, yet Abraham uh, and Sarah, um, they laugh at this. Um, Abraham laughs. We don't know if it's a laughter of joy that he believes Sarah will bear, but it seems to be uh, some doubt mixed in there too, for example, in Genesis chapter 17. And then Sarah just chuckles. Uh, the presence of the Lord is outside. They're, they're talking with Abraham, these messengers uh, of God, God's, God's presence, again, as it was with Gideon, is telling him what is going to happen and that in a year's time, uh, Sarah will bear a son. And she laughs. 
she chuckles. She, she uh, you know, rolls her eyes, we might say. Um, they had seen the power of God before. God's presence had been with them before, and yet they doubted his power. They bought into their age. They bought into uh, what they knew biologically could happen. And even though they had seen God's power before, they allowed that doubt of God's power to creep in. And, um, of course, it leads, in their case, to some efforts to do an end around of God's plan at different points. I think about this also, for example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, when Saul sees David, and David has this confidence that with God's strength, with God's power, uh, he can go down and defeat Goliath, uh, you know, the champion of the Philistines who have afflicted uh, and, and oppressed God's people. And Saul scoffs at him, you know, you are but a youth. Uh, you know, you're a kid. What are you going to do? Uh, had Saul not been chosen by God? Had Saul not prophesied? Had Samuel not anointed Saul king over Israel? Uh, and yet Saul's fearfulness, uh, his doubts, his willingness to take a poll. Uh, we see this in 1 Samuel 13 as well as in 1 Samuel 15 when he fails to do what God has called him to do because he fears the people. He fears their response more than he wishes uh, to honor God. Uh, he scoffs at David. He scoffs at uh, a person of such faith uh, and instead says, well, get real, you know, get realistic. Um, he doubts what God can do in and through someone who doesn't seem like they would be the person uh, to be the champion of God's people. I think about even Nathaniel, good old Nathaniel, who had no guile. Jesus said, Nathaniel, uh, shoot straight, right? That's Jesus' assessment of Nathaniel. But when Nathaniel is told uh, that they have found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, he says famously, I uh, love this, uh, you know, the genuineness of this in John 1 and verse 46, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, Nazareth is nowhere. Nazareth is just a, a, a little tiny bitty place. It's not even on the sea. It's up in the hills. And can anything good come out of Nazareth? Does the Christ not need to come from the city of David, from Bethlehem? Surely the Christ will come from Jerusalem. Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? The people had been oppressed. They've been oppressed by the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Greeks. And they've been oppressed by... Uh, the Romans, and they were living under corrupt leadership. And if God is with us, why have all these things happened to us? You can hear that question, that doubt, that, that belief that if God was here, this wouldn't be happening. If God was really with us, this wouldn't have happened to us. And of course, it plays out in those, those stories as well. So culturally, we tend to forget the presence of God. Personally, individually, when we look at what is happening, uh, we can forget or doubt at least the power of God. So how do we overcome that? Uh, I think in tough seasons, um, whether that's culturally, uh, you know, as we look around us in the world and see things that are happening that are difficult for God's people, that are difficult uh, for the church, or individually, as we see things that are tough, that are hard uh, to work through and to press through as people of faith, uh, we must hold fast. You know, we must uh, keep the faith that God is present, yes, uh, and then also that he is faithful. Uh, he's faithful to use his power uh, for our good and for his glory. I think there are um, some some very practical ways uh, to overcome this wine press mentality. I say wine press mentality because Gideon is down in the wine press to hide from the Midianites. But while he's hiding from the Midianites, he's also limiting his view, right? He's down in this pit um, where they would normally be, be stomping on grapes and, and grinding out, uh, you know, vintage and instead, he has got his grain there. He's trying to hide. Uh, he's trying to, um, you know, lay low uh, so that he will not be noticed. And sometimes, spiritually speaking, we reach that point too. Uh, God is calling us to something higher. God is calling us through his word uh, to share the gospel. God is calling us to, to be kind uh, to those around us. God is calling us to do good uh, in his name. And yet we are blinded behind the wall of the wine press. We look up and all we can see is big bad Midian. Uh, we can't see what God is doing. Uh, I think it's key, uh, as we talked about last week with things that are praiseworthy, um, that we be able to reassess and rethink uh, and refocus and remember what God has done in the past. If I'm just looking at everything that's going wrong in my life right now, 
and I have no sense of what God has done in the past or what God has promised for the future, uh, I'm going to be limited. I want to suggest uh, as we close three three ways to do this uh, as we go forward uh, into this uh, into this week. First, we've got to stop isolating ourselves and climb out of the hole. Uh, we've got to hear God's voice, and these are the ways uh, I think we can do that. I think that we hold fast to who God is um, by gathering and sharing in community. Sometimes people will refer to Hebrews chapter 10 uh, and the passage there about forsaking the assembly, um, you know, and, and they'll talk about church attendance. And certainly uh, gathered church attendance is, is under discussion there. But the reason that the Hebrew writer is encouraging them to be gathered is because um, they need each other to stir one another up. Uh, to faith and good works. They need to um, be there to encourage one another. Uh, yes, we want to be there to worship God 100%. Uh, I hope if you have the opportunity today, you'll be worshiping God with your local congregation. We'd love to have you with us in person. That's what we want. But also, I need that assembly. I need that gatheredness. I need sharing in community to stir one another up, to remind one another of what the Lord uh, has done. When I'm isolated, I am far more likely to get that wine press mentality. I can't see over the wall. I'm looking around and everything seems bad. Uh, if the Lord is with us, why has this happened to us? Lord, I've been trying to be faithful and yet I'm still struggling with this particular sin. I can't overcome it. Lord, I'm trying to be faithful and I've lost my job. Lord, I've tried to be faithful and my children are having a hard time. It's a new school year. Uh, they're, they're trying to, to fit in and they're struggling. Lord, if you're with us, why is this happening to us? If I am having that conversation only with myself, if I am having that conversation internally and not in concert with other believers and in connection with the Word of God, I'm always going to come out with a negative result. When I look around and my response is, as they did in the time of the judges, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. They all tried to pull themselves up with their own strength. They all tried to get ahead through their own means. No one was looking out for anybody else, and no one was looking to God. When that is our approach, we're always going to struggle. Galatians chapter 6 tells us that we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ that we should bear up with one another. Um, if you don't know what's going on with me and I don't know what's going on with you, um, I can't help you bear it. Um, I can pray with you from a distance, right? I can talk with you on the phone. Uh, I can be with you in community. We are blessed to have so much technology that allows us to be together. And we need to gather together to be together. Yes, to worship God as he's commanded, but also to hold fast to one another and to be able to tell the story uh, to one another again and again. We can get stuck in our head. We can get stuck in the wine press. We look around and all we see is blocked. All we see is negative. All we see is the enemy. And we're telling that same story to ourselves. Unless I'm with other believers who can encourage me to look up and to look beyond, I'm going to struggle. So we hold fast by gathering uh, and sharing in community. I think we also hold fast um, by recounting all that the Lord uh, has done. This idea of all that the Lord has done uh, for his people in history. If you're in Hebrews chapter 10 and you're reading about uh, the, the forsaking of the assembly, isn't it interesting that the definition of faith and the explanation of the life of faith is found in the very next chapter? It just flows right into Hebrews chapter 11 where the Hebrew writer tells us again and again and again, by faith Abel, by faith Abram, by faith Noah, by faith Enoch, all of these great men and women uh, of faith who kept the faith by the way that they lived. They stayed connected with God through the way that they lived. We are a part of that story. We're a part of that story. When we read in the New Testament about the Ethiopian eunuch and the Philippian jailer and Lydia and Phoebe and Paul and Barnabas and Andrew and Silas and Titus and Timothy and Lois and Eunice, we are a part of that story. We are a part of what God is doing in the world. God did not forget those people. God did not abandon those people. But if I'm focused on what God is doing just for me, just for my family, just for my congregation, just for my community, um, very localized, um, and we look around and we say, oh, our community is getting smaller, or we look around and say, oh, the church is uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that are passing away and we don't have as many people who are remaining faithful. If we get stuck 
in that wine press mentality of all that we can see is what's right in front of us, we miss out on what God has done for his people in the past and what God is doing for his people all around the world right now. Isn't it great to know that this morning as you're watching this, all across the world, people are worshiping. They're lifting up their voices to God. They're telling these same stories. In whatever language they speak, in whatever place they are, wherever they are in this big wide world, we're all a part of something that's bigger than us. We're part of the story that goes all the way back to the beginning of Scripture and goes all the way forward to the end of time. I think we have to be reminded of that. We can't just focus on the Midianites, right, in our life. We have to be able to remember what God has done and what God is doing uh, here and now. I think we also need, so we think about gathering together to encourage one another, thinking about recounting the stories of what God has done, but there's also this, this final element that I want to mention and that is that we hold fast, not just by the assembling of ourselves together. We hold fast, not just by thinking about what God has done for people in Scripture, what God is doing for other people right now in our world. We hold fast our faith by remembering what God has done for us individually, what God has done for me, what God has done for you. There's this very tender moment, and I want to I want to close with this passage in the Gospel of Mark. There's a man that's been driven out. Um, he's hiding. In a, in a hole in the ground, hiding in a cave, hiding in the tombs, um, like Gideon in the sense that he's been driven away from others. The circumstances of his life have, have found him here. Uh, he is someone who has been afflicted. Uh, he's been possessed by an evil spirit, in fact, a legion of spirits. And um, Jesus drives out those demons and heals this man. Verse 18 says that after Jesus had healed the man, he, he walked down to the boat to leave. Jesus is going to continue his mission, to continue his work. It says in Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5 and verse 18, And when he, that's Jesus, got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. Let me go with you. There's nothing for me here. You know, these people have driven me out. Jesus says in verse 19, However, Jesus did not permit him, but instead said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And the man departed and began to proclaim in the Decapolis, and that is all the surrounding cities, what Jesus had done for him, and all marveled. What Jesus has done, what God has done, is not just what God did for Moses, not just what God did for Paul, not just what God did for my grandmother, or what God did for the missionary across the sea. What has God done for me? What has God done for you? I can hold fast to my faith through some really difficult things if I can remember that God has been faithful to me in the past. What does Jesus say? Go home and tell your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Very easy, right, to get overwhelmed when we look around, um, when we think about all of the big things that are wrong in the world and all the big struggles that are wrong in our world, uh, all the ways that people hurt each other, all the ways that there can be darkness that seems to rise and light does not always seem to rise to meet it. And yet, we have the ability to encourage one another, we have the ability to recount the faithfulness of God in the past, and we have the ability to remember that God has been faithful to us. The man wanted to get out of that situation. Let me start over. Let me start new somewhere else. Let me get away from here. And Jesus said, no, that's not what you're called to. You're called to talk to the people around you. Talk to the people that know you and know the situation you've been in. And be reminded and give thanks for all that the Lord has done in showing compassion to you. There's a, um, a saying that you see sometimes on the internet. I've, I've seen people uh, write it on journals and that sort of thing. You know, we are living in, uh, you know, the things that we prayed for. We're living in the blessings that we prayed for. And I find that true in my own life. And I think many of you probably do as well. Um, we prayed to be uh, delivered from something. Uh, or we prayed to be uh, forgiven from something. Or we've prayed for people to find peace. Or we've prayed for a situation to be resolved. And sometimes it happens, right? We, we, we move through that and we immediately forget what we prayed for. We immediately forget how we've been blessed. We move on to the next challenge, to the next thing. It's good 
to remember and to give thanks and to remember that what we are experiencing now, the blessings that we have today, are in many ways the fulfillment of the things that we longed for in the past. We're part of a big story. Even our own very small lives, the very short amount of time that we're here, is part of something bigger that God is doing in us and through us and through his people in history and in the world and in our community right here. When we allow forgetfulness and fear uh, to shape our faith, that's our that's our challenge. Um, Gideon says, if the Lord is with us, then why have these things happened to us? He projects, right, um, the absence of the Lord, uh, and he doesn't think about the unfaithfulness of the people. He doesn't think about his own fear. He's frustrated. He's lost. He's scared. He's hiding. And the Lord says, you're going to be okay. You're a mighty man of valor. You're going to be all right. The Lord gives him signs. The Lord gives him assurance and leads him forth to lead God's people. We don't need to allow fear. We don't need to certainly allow forgetfulness to keep us from fulfilling God's will for us. And I think our challenge is this week that if we've never made that initial commitment to the Lord, there's no better time to do that, to reach out and to get in touch with uh, the church, get in touch with uh, me. You're welcome to reach out to me personally and talk about those things. We can study those things. For many of us who are believers, the challenge is not to forget and not to let fear overwhelm our faith, but instead to go forward, telling each other the story, remembering what God has done for all believers, and remembering especially what God has done for us, and using that as an encouragement as we live our lives from day to day. I think that's helpful for us. I hope it is uh, to be reminded that um, the Lord is with us. That's a very detailed sentence. It's a very, just kind of, we might pass over it, but it matters what we remember and what we choose to emphasize as we live uh, from day to day. Let's go ahead and uh, take a moment, take out your communion supplies if you have those. Uh, and as I say each week, you're welcome to turn off uh, the video at this point. Uh, if you have your communion supplies, maybe you're gathered with others uh, and want to pray together, sing a hymn together, uh, read some scripture together. Uh, but I do want to offer these prayers uh, for those who may be um, or they're not able to do that uh, because of, of their situation. And so first I'll pray for the bread and then pause for a moment and pray for the cup before we have our uh, announcement time uh, together. Let's go ahead and pray for uh, the bread. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you gave us this feast, that you gave us this meal, and that you said we are to do it in remembrance of, of you or do it in remembrance of your Son. And Lord, as we take this bread today, help us to remember, to not forget, but to remember the sacrifice that Jesus gave in giving his body for us. As we take this bread, help us to be reminded that he had a body, a physical body, that endured pain and hardship on our behalf, and help us to Take of this and remember the sacrifice that he gave for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. And let's pray also for the cut at this time. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we likewise... Remember Christ in this cup and the blood that was shed for us and help us as we take it today, as we're gathered and help us to remember and to proclaim his death until he comes. Help us to realize that we must look back and remember, but we must also look forward and proclaim and share the good news of his grace with all that we come in contact with. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Again, it's good to uh, see you here today and have this opportunity uh, to be together and to share this time. I know it is a big and busy week for many of us, uh, but we're grateful that you are here and able to join in with us today. Uh, please do come and be with us in person. If you're in uh, Weekly County or the surrounding area today, we would love to have you at 9, 10, and 5. Um, at the building. I do want to uh, recount, uh, so to speak, or to uh, remind us of uh, some birthdays and anniversaries that are coming up this week. We're excited about these. Uh, today is Duke Winston's birthday, and we're excited for Duke and Jody and for their life together, and uh, want to celebrate Duke today. Thankful for him. 
Uh, on Thursday, the 8th, Hal and Melanie Bynum will have their anniversary. We're thankful for Hal and Melanie and all they are for us and our congregation. Uh, and then on Friday, Buddy Kemp will have his uh, birthday on Friday the 9th. Uh, and also on Friday the 9th, uh, Matt and Brooke Hewitt uh, will be having their anniversary. And we're thankful for them and uh, love it when they're able to, to be down to visit with us. Um, also on Saturday the 10th, uh, Matt and Chloe Humphrey will be having their anniversary uh, on August 10th. And then Roe and Andrea Hughes will also be having their anniversary uh, on August uh, 10th. And so we want to uh, remember them uh, on Saturday for that. Um, I want to just give a big shout out of, of thanks to those who helped uh, coordinate our distributing of uh, school supplies. Um, we uh, were contacted by the schools uh, and the uh, Parent Association uh, in Dresden, as well as in Gleason, and we're able to help with that. And uh, you may have seen those posts that were shared uh, by the school. Um, various churches uh, have helped with that. Um, I know uh, the Dresden Congregation, the Palmersville Congregation, Liberty Congregation uh, over at Greenfield. The Greenfield Congregation helps with their uh, kindergarten supplies. And so I'm just so thankful that we um, honestly have a reputation of being willing to help. Uh, and that people are, are willing to reach out and that we're able to help in that way. Um, our students need to be supported. And uh, we think about that sometimes in terms of athletics or, or fundraisers, but uh, just having what they need, our students and teachers, to get through uh, the day uh, and to do the work that they need to do is important. And uh, thankful for those who helped out uh, with that. Uh, we also have our Magi supply lists that are available uh, in the foyer. Um, boxes will be delivered soon, and uh, we've committed to 40 boxes this year for that. And uh, we always um, have a good uh, measure of participation uh, with that, and we'll have some updates on a date to get those turned back in coming soon. But you can grab a supply list at the building, or if you need one of those uh, sent to you online, I can do that as well. I've also been asked to announce uh, there will be a community prayer night uh, that'll be at 6.30 uh, tomorrow evening, Monday evening, uh, at the parking lot at Dresden Elementary. Uh, this is not an effort of the school, and it is not an effort of uh, the Churches of Christ or of any one uh, church. Uh, it's just a community event, uh, and uh, we've been asked to, to announce that and uh, to share in that. Uh, there'll be people there from a lot of different backgrounds, uh, and so just be aware of that. I know we have many teachers uh, who, um, you know, uh, would, I think, appreciate prayer uh, and certainly parents as well. And so if that's something you're interested in on Monday evening, uh, just be aware of that. That'll take place at a, a 6.30 outside uh, at DES uh, tomorrow. Uh, also, the Greenfield Gospel Meeting begins today. Uh, the service tonight, uh, I believe I have this correct, uh, will be at 7.30. So those that meet at 6 would be able to get there. Uh, we, of course, would have plenty of time meeting at 5. And then we'll be at 7 uh, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, Alan Webster, who is the uh, primary author of the House to House, Heart to Heart uh, booklet. He's also written many uh, tracks that um, that people use. Uh, he has a, a, a just prolific writing ministry. Uh, he will be their speaker during their meeting this week. Also, Union Chapel's meeting will begin uh, today as well. And we have flyers uh, for both of those uh, at the building. If you need more information, uh, just reach out to us. Also, on Friday evening, August 9th, uh, there will be a singing at the Atwood Congregation. And um, many of you know Noah and Haley, um, who uh, were active in the Church of Christ Student Center at Martin. And um, Noah teaches uh, ag at West Carroll. Haley is a nurse about to have a, a new baby, um, but uh, Noah always coordinates that singing. He leads singing for the Atwood Church and does a great job with that, so we want to uh, support that if we have the opportunity. We also have several updates from our missionary families that we mentioned, uh, and those are on the bulletin board uh, at the building as well. We want to remember, as far as our folks who are dealing with health challenges uh, and sickness, we want to remember Lee Gwynn. Uh, Lee is uh, still in the hospital in Memphis uh, and dealing with um, trying to get some medication straightened out and uh, want to continue to remember Lee uh, and Judith this week. We're hoping that he will be able to uh, to return uh, to Weekly County Nursing Home this week, but want to continue uh, to remember Lee. Uh, we also want to remember Randy English. Uh, Randy went and got a PET scan on uh, last Monday, and then on Thursday they went back for the results, and they've seen some um, places, some trouble spots um, that he's dealing with. Uh, of course, Randy has had uh, cancer before, and so they're going to be monitoring those. And if you've seen Randy, 
Uh, you know he's dealing with uh, some lung issues as well. And so we want to continue to remember Randy and Pam uh, this week and um, just, just continue to lift them up uh, in prayer. Randy has really struggled um, as long as we've uh, known him at Lebanon with his physical health. And I just certainly want to continue to remember him. I want to also remember Miss Burnell McLean. She had a um, um, a, t a uh, treatment on Thursday, and then on Friday um, had a procedure. And I believe uh, I haven't heard the results of that, but hopefully, it's supposed to be getting some results this week so that they can better target uh, her chemo treatment. I talked to Mr. Darrell uh, on the phone uh, earlier in the uh, this past week, but haven't gotten the latest update on that. But uh, maybe by the time we're together today, uh, we will have uh, somebody will have talked with them and have a have a better update. Um, but looking to get more results Monday is the current uh, current information that I have for them and certainly want to continue to remember them. And I know many of you have been involved in the food train uh, that's carried food to them. And I appreciate those efforts to, to reach out to Daryl and Burnell uh, this week. We give thanks uh, that Miss Beverly Donahoe got a very good report with her uh, test, a follow-up after her cancer surgery. And uh, she's been judged to be in remission. And this will just be a situation where they'll monitor uh, and do scans and, and blood tests occasionally uh, to make sure she doesn't have any further trouble. But very thankful for uh, Lindsay's mom, Miss Beverly, and that good report that she's received. We want to continue to remember Jimmy Mayo, that's Judas' brother, uh, out in Texas. Uh, his cancer had uh, diminished and uh, was was in a better direction, uh, but that cancer has returned and he has been placed uh, on palliative care uh, with hospice. And so we want to remember uh, Jimmy and certainly remember uh, Judith as she's dealing with uh, that with a sibling and obviously not being able to be there uh, in person. I want to remember the family of Joe Smith, uh, Mr. Joe uh, Smith, who was at one time an elder at the Macedonia Church and then later at the Greenfield Church. Uh, he's the father of Jamie Smith, uh, who worships out at Hatler's Chapel. Um, he passed away this past week and his service was held yesterday uh, at Macedonia. And we certainly want to remember uh, Jamie and Dina and their uh, children and all their extended family. And I uh, remember DJ, uh, that's Joe's wife. I uh, want to remember her as well uh, in these, this difficult time that they're having in, in losing him. I want to continue to remember Ann Ralston uh, and also want to remember uh, Alan Neville uh, and the health problems that he's been facing. It's been good to see Greta Hughes this week, and we've also seen Miss Patsy McAlpin uh, back at services. We want to continue to remember them. Uh, want to continue to remember Casey Hughes. Uh, that's Ronell's uh, brother, and I uh, want to remember him as he's at home in Alamo. want to remember Miss Roberta Parker. That's Andrea's mom, uh, who is in the assisted living uh, there at Bales. want to continue to remember Kim Chadwell, as well as Vicki Whitworth. Uh, Miss Faye Robinson also is on our prayer list. Brenda K. Burris and Ray Burris. Uh, the sister and nephew of Greta Hughes. Um, we've had a large number of uh, people in our community dealing with sickness. Uh, some of you have seen where the COVID numbers uh, have been back up, um, hopefully not as uh, severe of cases, but the number of people has definitely increased. Um, and obviously we want to continue to remember our community and our country uh, in this divided season. Uh, we do want to remember, especially as we've mentioned several times today, uh, our students and teachers who are returning to school and also want to remember our college students who are uh, moving back in uh, over the next few weeks as well. There may be other updates that we need to share, things that I may have uh, overlooked or missed, and feel free to uh, reach out to me with those, and I'll try to share those uh, on our social media this week. Uh, particularly remember the gospel meetings that were mentioned, Greenfield and Union Chapel, and the singing at Atwood. Um, that way, they're happening this week. So if you don't think about it till next week, uh, you will have missed it. Uh, and we'll try to post a reminder on our Facebook as well. Feel free to share uh, this service. Um, I think it's helpful uh, that we not forget and that we uh, help one another uh, to remember God's presence and God's power uh, and to tell the story, uh, the story of faith uh, that we share um, through the ages, the story of faith um, that we share in community, with the church as we gather together, and then our individual stories of faith as well. Uh, come and let me tell you what the Lord has done for my soul, the psalmist said. And I think that's a great approach as we uh, go into this week. Let's pray as we close together. Our Lord and Father, we're grateful for this day, grateful for the opportunity to begin again, uh, to be renewed, to be strengthened. Lord, help us not to forget your presence with us. Help us not to forget um, that we can look up and see you and see the good that is happening. Help us not to have that wine press mentality that only sees the bad, 
that only uh, sees the negative, but instead help us to remember what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do uh, for us as your people. Go with us and bless us uh, through this week. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope everybody has a, a great week, and Lord willing, we'll see you soon. Have a great week. Bye-bye.